During his press conference today, Robert Mueller repeated a claim we've heard from official Washington virtually every day for the past two and a half years. The claim is that in 2016, Russia made an unprecedented assault on the integrity of America's democratic system. Russian intelligence officers who were part of the Russian military launched a concerted attack on our political system. The indictment alleges that they used sophisticated cyber techniques to hack into computers and networks used by the Clinton campaign. They stole private information and then released that information through fake online and identities and through the organization WikiLeaks. The releases were designed and timed to interfere with our election and to damage a presidential candidate. There were multiple systematic efforts to interfere in our election. And that allegation deserves the attention of every American. Well, that sounds compelling and terrifying, but is it actually true? Have we really proved that? After two years of investigations, what does the evidence tell us? Aaron Mate has been covering this story very carefully. He's a contributing writer at The Nation magazine, and he joins us tonight. Aaron, thanks a lot for coming on. So simple question, um, does the evidence back up the claim that the Russian government substantially interfered in the 2016 presidential election? Well, the evidence that exists might, but we haven't seen it yet. That's the key point. It's quite possible yes. that, what Mueller, that what Mueller is saying is true, but we haven't seen evidence to establish that yet. Take the theft of the stolen emails. So Mueller has laid out uh, in July 2018 a very detailed indictment of Russian uh, military intelligence officers, as he mentioned today. But yes. we don't know the source uh, f uh, of the information that he's basing that indictment on. Uh, what I can say pretty definitively is that it does not come from the U.S. agency that would know best what the Russian uh, military intelligence is up to, which is the NSA. Because for NSA information to be publicly released, uh, it would have to be declassified by the president. And we know that that didn't happen here. So we don't know uh, who uh, Mueller is citing when he contends in a detailed indictment uh, that the Russian uh, in, uh, military intelligence officers did this. Roger Stone's attorneys contend that it was CrowdStrike, and their, uh, which is a DNC uh, firm uh, that first right. accused Russia of the uh, uh, DNC hack. Uh, and Stone is trying to uh, compel uh, CrowdStrike's uh, evidence through discovery right now. We'll see what happens there. It should be very interesting. But the bottom line here is that we don't know. And in fact, Mueller even acknowledges in his report that he doesn't know, because when he talks about the uh, theft of excuse me, of DNC emails, uh, he talks about uh, the Russians appear to have stolen the emails. He doesn't say the Russians stole the emails. He uses that qualifier, huh. appear. And he also doesn't rule out uh, the fact Wait, that... Wait, I'm, I'm sorry, may I stop you right there? This is in, uh, that one right over my head. In the Mueller report, you're saying he does not unequivocally claim that they did it. He says only they appear to have done it? He's laying out a uh, comprehensive timeline of what he says is the Russian effort to, uh, to hack into the DNC right. and to steal information, uh, which and information can mean different things because not just the emails we're talking about, we're talking about uh, uh, research that was stolen, uh, uh, names of, of employees and so forth. But what we're really concerned about is the emails. And when Mueller is talking about the DNC emails themselves, he uses the qualifier. He says the GRU appears to have stolen yes. the emails. Now, if, he, if Mueller knew for sure that they stole the emails, he would say they stole them. And he also doesn't rule out that those emails were physically transferred to WikiLeaks in the summer of 2016, which means he also does not know for sure how those emails made their way uh, to WikiLeaks. Wow, that's a, a lot of uncertainty at the center of a story the rest of us have been told for years is absolutely settled. This is settled science. This is the earth is round kind of stuff. Like anyone who doubts it is a nutcase. Why are they pretending to know things that they don't know? Well, because we have a, a media and political culture in this country where we're supposed to just believe what U.S. intelligence officials say on faith, no matter how many times that blows up in our faith. So uh, in, in our face. So we all know what happened with the Iraq war. Yes. Uh, intelligence officials, including Robert Mueller, because uh, he was the head of the FBI, he testified before Congress that Saddam had weapons of mass destruction. He was concerned that Saddam was going to transfer that to terrorists. We know, we know how that turned out. Uh, John Brennan, who also played a key role in Russiagate, uh, he was there at the CIA during the Iraq War. 
fiasco. He didn't raise any objections. James Clapper uh, was, uh, was a U.S. intelligence official during the Iraq War. He claimed that there was intelligence showing that Saddam had moved his weapons of mass destruction into Syria. But despite this record of these people, and that we're supposed to now believe everything they say on faith, and we're supposed to take seriously, for example, when Robert Mueller says that this Russian social media campaign was part of a, a sweeping systematic effort to sow discord. When, when you look at what the uh, Russian, social, Russian social media activity actually was, it was juvenile clickbait. They yeah. spent about $46,000 in Facebook ads on the election. And we're supposed to take seriously this notion that this juvenile clickbait that nobody saw, and it actually wasn't even about the election. It was targeted basically at certain demographics. We're supposed to yeah. believe that that influenced malleable American voters. Which it's ridiculous. Yeah. Your, your average Chevy dealership spends more on Facebook ads every year. I mean, it's like insane, actually. Aaron Maté, a man of the left, an honest man, a skeptical journalist. We have too few of those. Happy to have you on, and I hope you'll come back. Thank you. Thank you.